Hello there, everybody. It's about night two, aka Nightmare, and welcome back to Dies Irae Amante Sementes. In the last episode, we completed Die Morgan Damarung. Got to see what Samiel looked like before she uh, got a little bit of a beauty mark on her face. I'm wondering if we're actually gonna, because I didn't really get to see when that actually happened. We also got to see Reinhard and not holding back and how fucking overpowered he is. <sighs> Oh, and um, a couple of you guys were kind of to kind of give me a bit of an explanation. Um, I asked what Beatrice was saying when she said Yawal. Apparently, that's a firm yes in translation. So, thank you very much for uh, clarifying that. Now, judging by the excellent little picture that was before I clicked this for uh, whatever the hell you pronounce this. It certainly just looks really happy. Totally, totally not sad whatsoever involving Kai and Beatrice. Which, another person kind of, another of you guys kind of explain this a little bit. Kai's not even born at this point, in in this time. Which is something that I, pro I really should have, like, clicked in my head, like, wait, when does this take place? Oh, uh, crap, he's not even here yet, is he? Okay. Which. Holy shit. Beatrice is old. Let us play poker. Uh -huh. Who is you, little child? Who is you, individual on the right? And person on the... on my left? Okay. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Why the hell not? The year 1995. December's snow was gently veiling the city of Budapest as an unexpected guest entered a room in a hotel which used to be a castle. Instead of a greeting, however, all she received was an invitation to a card game. Yu-Gi-Oh! Not only was it far from an appropriate welcome, it was just about ridiculous enough to rid anyone of their words. With her eyes turning wide and radiating perplexity, the mature female guest was no exception. Wearing a revealing party dress that matched neither the place nor the season, she herself was certainly quite a curious sort. But she couldn't hold a candle to the one seated on the antique chair. A white-haired girl, her face adorned by a thin smile and two silent, still, and servile men at her sides. With nothing but a slight movement of her eyes, the girl urged the woman to sit before her. <laughs> Her voice had little presence, but it was clear and clean to the point of making the listener feel as though it was flowing through their brain. By appearance alone, she was a girl in the middle of her teens, but her aura was that of an elderly woman. Her mellow mannerisms made it seem like she was constantly dreaming of something, a feature unique to those into entered maturity while being denied a childhood. Simply put, the girl was no friend to the ordinary. Some would even liken her to elves inhabiting Alfheim. She gracefully raised her elegant arm. Orca. In response to that single word, one of the two servants began to move. The butler-like, sword-ready senior stayed immobile as the youth in the priest's garb reached towards a shelf, took a deck of playing cards, and began to skillfully shuffle them. It all seemed to find, except for one distraction. <laughs> A smile befitting both ladies and witches appeared on the woman's visage. The young man gave no response, and only continued shuffling with a blank expression. The movement of his hands was smooth. Uh, the extent of making him seem like a machine programmed for this purpose alone. I'm sorry, my, my, my brain ceased to function for like a minute there. I don't know what, what the hell just happened. However... A machine wouldn't have such a manly bulge pushing against the crotch of the gob. I, I just really, I just mentally registered what the hell I just said. 
おおでもあなたのような女性を前に反応しないというのも失礼にあたるのかしら私そういう機微はよくわからないのですけれど<笑>ご気分を返されたのなら謝罪いたしますわ<笑>彼はいつもこうなのです Oh, my deepest apologies. You see, he's always horny. We always have to deal with such a rather crude man. It's me. Always! Hi. Wasserer and I, George, in Kokoro, Uwawale, the Ido, no, this. Dancing was Kunakara, the so you tokoro, Garimasuna. Folka, I, it is the Junjo, Nano, this, eh? But as you know, Nano has created a state. Kare no Yona Mono, I, you know, Yoroko, the Biki, Koto, that, oh, my. <laughs> oh god! This, this is fucking. This, I, 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 this is fucking weird. Okay? Okay, cool! He's always horny. Horny, get it. With his young heart set on someone far away, Volker was wallowing in memories of carnal pleasures. The girl spoke as if she knew the workings of his mind, but the woman refrained from commenting about that. She only took her cards and focused on the game. The result was far from what she expected. Without even calling, the girl folded the moment the game began. The woman didn't know her host's cards, but her own hand wasn't anything special. She didn't even have a pair. Fucking extreme foreknowledge there. Ikasama wa kirai toyu ka nigate nano desu. Watashi wa gijutsu de naku chikara ni yoru mono nano de. Miete iru toyu koto to. Sore o dou katsuyo suru ka wa betsu jigen no hanashi de shou. Yes, please. Mind reader and clairvoyant. Kind of broken skills you got there, little lady. If no cheating was involved, the girl's feat could only have been accomplished with the combined use of those two powers. Strangely amused by what she just experienced, the woman began to believe that psychic monstrosities were more than just a swindler's preferred profession. どうでしょうね。ですが私は会話自体好きですわよ。本音と建前というのでしょうか。そうしたものに魅了されてなりません。人間は娯楽として完成されているとは思うのです。私にとって世界は名画と名曲に満ち溢れているえ。あなたの人
Not even natural human forgetfulness could prevent her from exposing that which was etched onto their lives. The woman was enthralled. She couldn't help but be elated by the prospect of negotiating with a person that suited the maddening nature of the information she brought. Siegland Eberwine? Eberwein? It, wait, is, is, is it pronounced Eberwein or Eberwein? I think it's pr it. God, I, I wish I knew. The woman had no one to turn to. The parliament, the parlamil, the paramilitary. I almost said parliamentary. The paramilitary refused to act, and she had to come here all by her lonesome, as nothing less than a deserter. However, the indignation and complaints about her circumstances were all blown away by this encounter. All was good. Everything was going exactly as it was meant to. As strong and advanced as America, her motherland may have been, their fixation on common sense would render them completely useless in this particular battle. The dance macabre was best performed by the dead and broken, such as herself and the girl before her. Nope. Still wearing her mannequin-like smile, Siegland, the leader of Doppladder, expressed her awareness. Serpent's underlings were the band of raids whose existence on this earth was a transgression against both the girl and the woman. Hmm. Hmm. Sieglin quickly and plainly discarded the modern man's ultimate solution to just about all phenomena. それは全スワスチカの同時解放を意味します。あの町の住人は生贄なのですよ。基本として捧げさせてはいけない。総画の二三本は折れるかもしれませんし、核となる水果を不可で壊せるかもしれない。ですが、どうでしょうね。レーベ
つまり正面からぶつかるとあなたからしてそれを望んでいるではありませんかそしてお、シェッ、私はフィニッシュ。The woman couldn't deny it. That was the prime reason why she arrived at this place. Actually, you know what? あなたからしてそれを望んでいるではありませんかそして私にその手段を求めている。There. Illusions had to be far to the illusions. Jane gave a light nod before inquiring further. この辺りが妥当な戦果とへえ The woman was fully aware of what kind of creature the girl was but she couldn't help but become puzzled at what she had just said It was pure nonsense to her 私は以前ベトナムで吸血鬼に舞台を壊滅させられたのでしょそれであなたはリビングデッドになってしまったえメロン、存じていますわ。おー。destroyed by the vampire。why then was she proposing such an insignificant amount of people。she spoke as though their opponents were normal humans with the same killing potential as anyone else。siegel knew herself knew her foes are monsters。unworldly creatures hardly fit to be called human。それくらいにしておいてはどうですかな、局長。One of the servants broke his indifference. Though he was an old man, likely over the age of 70, he didn't show any signs of senescence as he scolded his petite master with a soft yet heavy and masculine baritone voice. He understood her love for wavering minds, but didn't approve of her bad habits. You mean straightforward like you with your bulge in your pants thinking about the probably sex the entire time? I'm waiting for an answer. A Volker, the one who dealt the cards, followed him up with those words. It was becoming apparent that their master servant relationship was not as strict as it first seemed, and Sieglin supported that impression with a forced shrug. Yeah, probably. 僕の時は10日かかった。思い出したくもないし、まあ何もない。<笑> Somehow I find that believable. They just talked for like 10 days straight. ちょっとどう思いますか、ジェーン。誰かを理解して友情を深めるのに、そのくらいの時間は不可欠だと考えるのですけど。Well, I'm very picky. Make sure that there's some cookies. Maybe some. Now, don't judge me on this. Maybe some salmon patties for possibly a lunch. A couple glasses of milk. Maybe some nice herbal tea. And then maybe. Maybe. Ten days to score and get a full grasp of a person's mind and character. It was hard to tell whether that was painfully long or frightfully short. Whatever the case, an inescapable conversation like that was nothing short of a torturous interrogation. The, bu the butler's name is Alfred! Sorry, the, the, the servant. He looks like a goddamn butler! Of course, it's Alfred! Wishing to settle her business here, Jane looked at the old man, who replied quickly, clearly, and concisely. France, the way. Oh, France. France? So. So, 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 so. Volker spoke in a slovenly tone. Oh. 
Sieglin weaved her words as if she was still wandering through the world of dream. ルフィ術館の秘伝な <laughs> Don't worry, we shall do our best to keep the demon lolly away from you. She only had to bring the object in question. Faced with a sense of pressure, not unlike that of pure madness, Jane came to understand that. Just like herself, Volker was pursuing his own supreme moment. Thus, there was no room for hesitation. The woman was satisfied just by knowing they would face those immortal demons of war in a battle to the death. Joe, <laughs> As Jane listened, nodded, and stood up to take her leave, Sieglin spoke up behind her. She momentarily fell silent and formed an implicative smile. A divine vessel. Valeria Trifa's demise would ruin their foe's plot. Thus, Sieglin sentenced him to death. The elf like girl's voice echoed throughout the room as she continued wording just how much she wanted him gone. Jane left the room and closed the door, but she could hear the brain piercing voice of the girl even as she walked down the hallway. <laughs> The woman whispered as if talking to herself, but she was fully aware that the girl was listening. Jane had a certain question on her mind. She didn't really care much for the answer, but it was likely something that no person would n normal normal person knew. Otherwise, the world's information agencies would consider the Obsidian Table to be nothing more than a ludicrous band of war criminals. That or a hard rock band. She thought that Sieglind Eberwein might be one of those who knew it. <laughs> All hell would break loose! Or that at the end of the world. The reply came with a gust of snow. Jane's body stiffened. It wasn't due to the voice in her head nor the chill flowing into the, into the lobby. It was the existence that broke the snowy curtain freezing Budapest and entered the premises. The living dead's blood froze at the overwhelming presence. It looked like a girl in her late teens, one with striking beauty and platinum blonde hair that radiated elegance and was sure to leave an impression. However, appearance was absolutely meaningless when compared to everything else about the girl. After all, her aura wasn't that of a human. To Jane, she seemed like a Valkyrie hauling the Reaper's scythe itself. <sighs> A slight gasp escaped the woman's lips as she placed her hands on the left side of her chest. Jane recognized this overwhelming sensation. She came to know it all too well when she still went by the name Eileen Cartwright. It happened in the jungles of Vietnam. She couldn't forget even if she tried. The aura of a person walking with the weight of thousands. The girl was just like the man who rendered her dead. The legion of the dead was standing right before her eyes. And now... Before Jane could even realize that the girl was right by her side, her words as she passed here were her were far colder than one would expect from someone so come. I have no intention to fight you. Restrain yourself. That thing won't do anything to me. She was referring to the gun Jane was subconsciously reaching for. There are little children here. Please stop, it's dangerous. The words echoed within her mind and made her doubt her hearing. Uh -huh. Children? Little children. It was something Jane would never expect a creature like her to say. Overwhelmed and dumbfounded, Jane stood in place for about ten seconds, during which the girl walked into the building and left her alone. She wasn't wrong. 
Jane had only just now realized it, but seeing how the place was a regular hotel, there were indeed children around. She was wondering why they chose this place for their meeting, and this event had just made it clear. They had a meeting with that girl right after they were done with her, and this was their way of being careful and keeping the foolish, dim, callow brat in check. <laughs> oh, hi. Siegel and giggled right into her mind. She snickered. Brats were brats regardless if they lived for hundreds or thousands of years. A blockhead who could have who could have their actions be restrained by something so weak was a great example of stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Jane didn't understand her point, but it was clear that the girl only wanted to mess with her guest. The woman chuckled, her voice filled with amusement. <laughs> Jane looked as though she was talking to herself, so one of the children running around the lobby stopped and stared at her with a confused expression. The dead woman gave him a smile and still wearing nothing but her party dress, went out into the snowy streets. Her heart was no longer beating. She could neither feel cold or grow old. It was all so she could meet him once more and receive his love. Huh? Other Story 3 Verfaulen der Sagen The year 1995, December 25th. It was the day when she came to understand her own fate. <laughs> the Sonin kind was still young, and Zarathustra had yet to appear. Indeed, it was far too early. The girl understood it well. However, despite... No. Exactly because of it. She knew better than anyone that she had to start right here and now. Oh! Hi! Hi! Just casually gonna go ahead and say that. Hello there, I'm going to kill one of your people. Oh. Okay. Kudan no koto. Kiko no joroku o erareru to yu yakujo. Ima mo soi arimasen ka. She knew it to be the only way for her to save them, to keep them alive. Otherwise... It would be too late for them. Beatrice. <laughs> <laughs> そして若さ。青すぎる。ああ、見るに対応。焦がれた女が醜く落ちた
今私の前にいる女はただの亡霊に過ぎんのだと理解したあなたこそ変わりませんねアルフレート融通が効かない協力すると言ったでしょうそちらのお姫様に生産杯が倒せるとでも思っているのですかそんなことは知らんただ私は私の任を果たす貴様の立ち位置など考慮するつもりはない反目しているだからどうしたあの男は獅子心中の虫すら操るだろうよましてそれが貴様のような小娘ならなおさらにうん。So Alfred knew Beatrice for a while. Apparently had a thing for her too. ゆえにこれが我々に対する協力と知れバレリア・トリファの駒を鎧をすべて剥ぐ。今宵の一瞬。あの男が丸裸となる空撃を生じさせるためだけのベアトリス・キルヒ・アイゼン貴様の価値はその発端となった小石の一頭に過ぎんのだ司令貴様のバルハラはもはやないおおぼいまた随分と自信満々に言いますねあなたに負け越した覚えはありませんけど Okay, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of slightly confused here. We're going to work together, but first I actually want to fight you and I actually want to kill you, by the way. So we're still going to work together, but I'm going to kill you. And this music that's playing. Ooh. No Carlcraft was going to be in the world. That's it. ラインハルトハイドリシの忠実なる死神だと黙れ一度言ってみろ何度でも言ってやろう貴様が何を思い何をしようと悪魔の手のひらからは抜け出せんましてその傀儡である生産杯のうちすらもそれが貴様ら魂を追った負け犬どもの宿命だと最大の武器はその愚かしくも理解を絶するかたくなさにある現実を歪める幻想己が欲望に対する執悪なまでの狂心ゆえにだこれを崩すことが何よりも寛容亡き様らの鎧はその効果を失っている不滅の戦機とやらも銃弾の一発で死ぬ常人と変わらん<笑>あらばこそ貴様が暗い取り込んだ数千もの魂は全て燃料に使われていようその打弱な幻想を具現するためにジーズ父親母親そして兄彼らの同国が聞こえぬかベアトリスシステまで呪われた定めに結ぶ哀絶がなんとふざけたバカ娘であることよ私は。迷い惑い問い続けろ黒煙卓の戦機などと汚れた力を発揮させてたまるものかい<笑>シェーズいい加減その痛ましい夢から覚めろバレリア・トリファを倒すラインハルト・ハイドリヒを消すカール・クラフトを滅すできることをいつまでも奴らに膝を折った時点で貴様にそれは不可能だエレオノーレ・フォン・ビッテンブルグは戻らない We still have hope. At least a little bit. マクだ
貴様の過ちを私が今正してやろう全てはもうはるか過去その命脈は黎明の日に終わっていたのだ師匠は土に帰るがいいさらばだ私が愛した気高き少女の残像よ Hmm. Was she really that vile? Did she really fail to grasp her position? Was her childhood friend right to condemn her? Oh, they were childhood friends. Was Beatrice k e t e s i n really just a walking corpse? She couldn't deny the man's words. As her oldest living friend, he made her painfully aware of just how heavy the last 50 years were. Beatrice could make excuses about how she used to be young and childish, yet the path she had walked was paved with blood and corpses. She was indeed the wraith he deemed her to be. However. She sincerely believed that, and had people who believed it with her. But most of all, she wished to believe it was true. He was right. The dead would never return. So she hoped for a miracle, the true goal to shine brighter than the sun. Beatrice wanted to believe that no choice she made throughout her life was a mistake. She wished to become the light to illuminate the paths of all those she wanted to save. That was the core of her soul, the unfalsified truth within her. Am I to assume that we're suddenly in the past? Even further, further into the past? Like. Okay, I don't know who the hell this blue girl, this blue haired girl is. I said her name is Kyoka. Uh. Am, am I to assume that this is. We're gonna see what young Beatrice looks like and maybe young Alfred? I'm going to assume this. Wrong. Holy shit, hey! You're looking surprisingly less dead. Face, but、uh, I'm assuming that you're talking to somebody else because if you're talking to me, that's kind of weird. Oh, she's got a camera. Nobody heard that. Nobody heard this suddenly、uh, glitch out. I, I promise, nobody heard that. That totally, 100% did not happen. I totally swear that did not happen. It did not just suddenly or do any of that. I swear.
になりたいと思って。Arena Honjo? Oh. Oh, oh. Hey, Ellie. I found your relative. Jesus Christ, you talk fast. Dakato Bokua. You say, Dareka or Skinny Narutoka. So not somebody one in the. Oh, well, you did a bang up job in that in the future. I mean, what? Wait, it is. I have no intention of falling in love with anyone. That's certainly one way to turn somebody down, dear God. Oi, Akora Kono Akadosiori. Kyota, you kill, Sasagani, eat up to Kitaka, you was at the Morai Masket, eh? Itaina, Nanta Yokirisaki, son. More hideous me, what on the car? Ayak, Kyoshi, and Modora Nito. Kirisaki, Kyoka. That's a lot of K's. Prompted by some aggressive pokes of. Oh! And I'm in Kai's perspective now? Oh! Uh. Prompted by some aggressive pokes on my back, I turned around to find one of my classmates. She was pouting and. Uh, looked ready to scold me for the rest of the day. Christ, that expression. I mean, to be honest, if I'm gonna be going with this for Setsuna, or I'm sorry, not Setsuna, Ren. God, they got Tokyo Battle on the mind. If I was gonna go with that one for Ren, I figured I might as well stick with my Michelle for Kai. I mean, kind of. True. But it would be very dishonest to let her live on and ho- No, no, God, no, no, wait, no, do not take what I said out of context. Okay, it would be very cruel to let her like have this false sense of like, oh, there might be a chance. That would be even more crueler. If the longer she waited, the longer she waited, and then finally, after many time, after a very long time of waiting, you just suddenly say, no, I don't like you. That would be infinitely worse. I think. そんなことは。そうよ。私はなんだか。あんたが壁張ってるように感じちゃうね。壁違う。張ってるでしょ。Hmm. Interesting, the Honjos and the Sakurais have a history. 
She was completely right. There was nothing I could say back to her. そこで切り崎さんは恋愛だよとかそういうフォローはないんかい。うん。ああ。まあ、そうだね。ごめん。いろいろ助かってるよ。君みたいなのがいてくれて。見たい見たいって何よ。うっとしばかってこと。そうは
On that day, Kyoka died. Hi, but did it get this my master? Korega Yoni, you in a good time, you are a good Kamasto. Yamato, let us go. That's not me. No, this name. Would Beato be a preferred? No, I'd probably die. <laughs> yeah, I think Kyoka's going to die. Ladies, ladies, calm down. I don't want to die here because I, I feel like I'm going to get caught in the crossfire. <laughs> this was happening in the hallway. Other students were watching and class was about to start. <laughs> I knew I was gonna get caught in the crossfire! They denied it, but the cooperation in their reply was the very definition of camaraderie. No doubt. I'm gonna take a minute just to kind of end it right there. It's a bit shorter than I normally do, but I don't want to go too far in because I would like a little bit, um, I'd like a, let's see, part two. Just kind of a, um, opinion. Uh, kind of, I'm gonna ask you guys at the end here. Um, I know sometimes I kind of do voices for, like, some of the narration. Depending on what character, like, I'm through. Like I was doing for, you know, where I was kind of, like, doing a deeper voice whenever it was Ren. Um, does the Michelle voice annoy you whenever I'm doing it through Kai's perspective? Uh, that's kind of why I'm wanting to end it here, because I know some people can get a little annoyed when I'm using a voice that they might find a little bit improper for some characters and all that. So... I mean, to be fair, I was going a little too deep at first with Ren. And then I kind of raise it up a little bit. So, I just want to know what you guys think. Well, this is a, this turned, this started a little bit not what I was expect. I did not expect it to just start the way it did. But, now I'm getting even more information. And also, to, I'm also ending it here because I kind of feel really dumb that I accidentally got the names of Irina, Honjo, and... Kyoka Kirasaki mixed up. I feel really dumb. And I know I'm probably going to be... <laughs> I feel really dumb. I'm so... I, I apologize for that. Alright, alright. Actual thoughts about this so far. Okay, good. There was another person that I did not know that apparently Kai and Beatrice knew named Kyoka Kirasaki. My, is, is that how the... I think that's how the name was pronounced. I hope it is. I feel... It is. Hmm... I wonder how she- I wonder what role she plays in their backstory. Don't got Kirasaki. I feel like I need to keep that name in my memory. I'll probably forget it, but I think it's one of those names that I need to kind of keep, uh, like in the back burner of my mind so I can remember them. Actually, that's probably one of the names that I can put down on the list that I need to prepare. So that way I got like a bunch of bullet points that'll remind me when I, after, during my break for this. Okay. Um, good thing. I'm actually happy that I get to see more of Beatrice and Kai's backstory. Seeing, I'm guessing how, well, okay, this is, I'm guessing this is not really how they met, but how their relationship started. Or at least just a glimpse into what they were before too much shit hit the fan. So... I'm happy about that. I have, I still have no idea what the hell happened with that weird uh, glitch thing. Guys, don't don't adjust your computers. That happened on my end too, so I have no idea what the hell happened. But anyway, um, that's where I'm going to end it. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, I think somebody kind of pointed this out that 
according to this story, depending on how long it'll be, I think I might be able to get it done in maybe three parts. Two parts if I do extra recording, which obviously I'm not going to be able to do right now. It's unconfirmed at the moment. But anyway, I guess we might be able to finish it either this week or at the beginning of next week. It all depends. But anyway, that's where I'm ending it right there. I'm looking forward to seeing a little bit more concerning Beatrice and Kai's past. I'm looking... I also want to know a little bit more about this Kyoka character. My god, she's a fast talker. She's more fast talker than freaking Kasumi. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hello there everybody, Sabata Night 2 here, and if you like this video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And hey, if you guys like my content, then maybe you'd like to check out another channel who I think deserves equal attention. So click that nightmare emblem and check out that channel, or go to the links in the description down below. Once again, thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.